So welcome to Awaken Your Feminine Power. My name is Sarah. If you are new to my world and just tuning in, um, I'm so happy that you're here. And um, we're going to dive deep into, you know, feminine and masculine energy today and what that really means and how to embody your divine feminine essence and really your sacred masculine in order to live a harmonious, a more harmonious existence. And, and really this you know, has been a huge game changer for me. The reason I like to call, create this container and invite women to join in this kind of session is because there is, at least in what I see, a huge call in the collective for men and women um, to awaken more to their feminine essence. This is happening in gender, males and females. Gender is actually nothing, has nothing to do with feminine and masculine energy. So it is not gender specific. And so we're going to dive deeper into that and identify, you know, um, feminine and masculine cycles, what it feels or looks like if you're stuck in a toxic loop, how to identify that and how to really break some of those patterns um, that keep you in those toxic loops. And, and so we're going to just dive deep into this. Please um, raise your hand if you have any questions. There's going to be plenty of time for question and answer. There's going to be plenty of time for comments. Uh, and so we're just going to go ahead and dive in and get started. First off, I would love to know in the chat box just where you are with feminine and masculine energy. I know I read all of your comments when you registered for this event, um, but I'd just like to know of that, the ones that are in attendance right now, if you could throw in the chat box like a one to a 10, 10 meaning you are well versed on this, you maybe already teach it, this is something that you maybe coach other people on, um, or one being you're brand new to this um, concept of feminine and masculine energy. So that sort of helps me gauge the conversation, the, the, the flow today as it unfolds organically, if I know where everybody's at. Three, five, one, five. Six, three. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be really good, even if it's something, you know, I feel like there's no accidents, right? So we're all here. This is a unique container that's only going to exist this one time, right? Because all of the energy that we bring to this container right now is unique and it's never going to happen again. So this is uh, always a divinely guided container. The conversations could flow from this very organically and um, we'll just see where it goes. But first we're going to, I'd like to just, you know, um, share a little bit about how I got here. So, right, you know, before I started helping female spiritual entrepreneurs grow their business and um, female embodiment coaching, my, my, um, my past life, my uh, previous self was a realtor and I was in the real estate um, game, very much stuck in a hustle. Um, lots of burnout, lots of overwhelm, lots of working until I was exhausted, really no healthy boundaries around my time or my energy um, with clients or within relationships or family. Um, so just really over giving, um, giving from an empty cup. I was always chasing that proverbial carrot outside of myself, whether that be success or money um, or even a committed partnership, a committed relationship. So I was always chasing things outside of myself. And I felt really guilty taking time off um, with, like I said, no healthy boundaries around time or work or relationships. I often numbed out to wine or Netflix um, uh, or being a workaholic, which was another way for me to always be on the go, 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 go. Very stuck in that hyper-masculine energy of always on the go, which was an ingenious way to keep me from going inward and really more connected to my feminine essence. So as a workaholic, I, I lacked a total lack of self-care, um, carrying the literally the weight of the world on my shoulders, feeling like I had to do everything. I had to micromanage everything. Really, this was me being a control freak. And that was largely due to my inability to trust not only myself, but trust others. So I couldn't trust clients. I couldn't trust employees. I couldn't trust um, my partner. I couldn't trust other people. So I had to take on the responsibility. So I thought um, on my own shoulders. And so I developed this um, sort of alter ego, misindependent alter ego, which I can do everything on my own and I don't need anybody else and I can do it all, you know, I 
wore that as a badge of honor. So I really had pride in myself by being this independent, not having to rely on others. And that was really fear-based as well, obviously. Um, I was often wearing a happy face a lot, uh, even when I was, especially when I wasn't, because I was so caught up in external, um, external, uh, how others viewed me externally. And so I was trying to keep up and just make sure that on the outside looking in, it looked as good as it could, right? Because on the inside, I was a hot mess and I was completely ignoring, suppressing or rejecting my actual true emotions, um, which so just suppressing, 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 and then putting on a happy face in order for people in order to be accepted and in order to, for people to think everything was okay, because the last thing I wanted to do was go inward and actually deal with any of the inner turmoil that was coming up or feel any of the actual emotions. Um, and this often led to a lot of frustration, a lot of anger. Um, I was easily irritated and moved to a state of rage, you know, back in the day, if, if I was cut off in traffic or if something wasn't going my way. Um, it was highly irritable. I was highly irritable. And this was, this is a byproduct of rejecting our own emotions and not owning them and feeling them and allowing them, rejecting aspects of our beingness, like reject, rejecting aspects of what is, rejecting aspects of this dualistic nature that we exist in, which is where the feminine and masculine actually come from. It's not actually gender. It's actually part of this dualistic nature that we exist in the yin and the yang, the up and the down, the good and the bad, the light and the dark, they coexist. They are two sides of the same coin. But when we spend half of our life rejecting everything we quote unquote feel is bad, then oftentimes that leads to a lot of frustration, right? I think Eckhart Tolle said, um, accept the present moment as if you have chosen it, right? And that was a that was something that really resonated back when I used to listen to him. Um, and this was long after this, I wasn't listening to him during this hot mess that was going on, right? That was just, you know, accepting, accepting what is, and then being able to make changes from that point, but being able to accept and not reject what is, was a huge um, a breakthrough. Um, but this constant irritation, move to anger, suppressing emotions, um, control issues, um, feeling very unhappy, but projecting perfection outside, always worried about, you know, how I looked or what I was wearing or what I was driving or how much money I was making or this or that. So just addicted to perfectionism, which is just a really sneaky way to hold yourself to some, imper you know, some impossible standards. So you can eventually then just find another way to beat up on yourself because in actuality, we're already perfect in our hot messness, right? There's nothing really to reject. It's that's rejecting part of our own humanness, right? So so stuck in perfectionism, eventually all of the stress and the go, go, go and the workaholic and the lack of self-care and the emotional inner turmoil and the rejecting and the suppression, all of that led to a lot of stress, as you can imagine. And that stress led to a lot of health induced issues. So, um, you know, candida, leaky gut, IBS, food allergies, adrenal fatigue, hormone imbalance, weight gain, um, eventually suppressing my immunity, right? Because the stress is so tied to your immunity. So I was getting sick with the flu after flu after flu, still out there showing houses and signing clients, signing deals but with the flu. Um, and then eventually landed myself in the ER with walking pneumonia because I couldn't breathe. Um, because my lungs were filling up with fluid. And I realized like, obviously something has to change. <laughs> um, at the same time, I was attracting a revolving door of men that were non-committal or not showing up for me the way I needed them to, um, needed them to, quote unquote, needed them to. Um, and so I was not accepted. <laughs> There's some noise here, so I'm going to ask everybody to mute. Um, so I was not really fully being accepted or honored or respected the way I desired in my relationships, and there was a revolving door of that happening. At one point, um, you know, uh, I was also engaged to someone that obviously I should not have been engaged to, and I, I remember this thought just came to me right before this masterclass, so I think I'll share it. I remember being you know, having this beautiful ring and this beautiful proposal in France. Um, and then one day looking down at the ring on my finger and realizing that it really was 
uh, it really was just a symbol that somebody loved me. It really didn't matter who that person was. It was just a symbol that somebody loved me. And when I realized that that was just a form of external validation that I was still seeking outside of myself in the form of an engagement to someone that I sh shouldn't have been married to um, or engaged to, I took it off and I gave it back. Right. And so there was um, a constant reminder that there was a seeking outside of myself for my own worthiness, for my own validation, because I was so disconnected to my feminine essence, which is my beingness, right? Who I truly am, my core essence. In my belief, and I don't want to project this, we all come from source or oneness or infinity or infinite intelligence or God or whatever you want to call it. But we're here. Um, having this individual expression as this 3D dualistic reality that we live in. But ultimately at our core, we're all the same and all come from this sense, uh, this source of love, unconditional love, freedom, uh, God, whatever you wanna call it, whatever word you wanna use, it doesn't really matter. But there was such a disconnect from to that that I felt lost in the world, trying to make sense of who I truly was and seeking this carrot outside of myself in every area of my life. With my health, I was oh, I was always worried about going to the gym to look perfect, so I uh, counting every calorie, right? Why? So I could feel worthy, right? Same with the engagement ring, same with the hustling and selling and working so hard so I could have the success, external success that I desperately needed in order to validate my self-worth and, you know, and the list goes on, right? So my entire life was set up to constantly be seeking outside of myself. On a deep level, all I really craved was ease and freedom and a sense of harmony, inner harmony, a relationship with my own well-being, even though that's, I, I wasn't really conscious of that, but that's what I, it was an internal craving and obviously a harmonious uh, partnership. But at the main core essence, it was, I wanted to feel good in my own skin and I wanted to feel at peace and I wanted to feel at ease. So my solution at the time was to sell everything and move to Costa Rica, sell my house and move to Costa Rica and go do yoga on the beach. And I didn't do that. That was actually just another form of the ego with escapism, just like the numbing out to wine and Netflix was. So our ego loves to escape, um, avoid, numb out, run or fight against um, things, right? And so that was just another sneaky form of escapism. So I didn't do that. What I did do is I did take time to do some quote unquote soul searching. So I started to travel the world solo travel. I got certified in yoga. I got certified in energy healing. I cleaned up my diet. I went vegan for a year and I still do a lot of these things to this day, right? I, I eat clean, non-GMO, organic, all those things. And so what happened was I started to heal on the physical level very quickly, started to see lots of shifts, right? Um, and that tends to be where we go first because we can see tangible results very quickly when we focus on the physical. And that got me so far. It did help me heal my body. It did help me have more of, it, it catapulted me into a spiritual awakening. It opened me up. Um, and it really was a form of self-love and self-care for the very first time that I was really able to do that for myself. And it got me so far, but it the pattern still persisted, the falling into hustle, burnout, overwhelm, and the lackluster relationships that were not fulfilling, um, really abandonment or rejection or lack of respect from relationships, those revolving doors still happened. And so the cycles were still there. They were just there to a lesser degree. So it's sort of like peeling away a layer of the onion. Um, so I was peeling away layers, but I was getting closer to the core essence, but there were still layers that needed to be peeled away. And there was still more inner truth, I guess, that could be realized, self-realized. And so I studied nutrition. I did all those things and I went on a self-healing journey and it got me to the point where I was you know, feeling better, uh, really feeling good in my body and a sense of, um, you know, well-being, but certain patterns still persisted. And what I started to also latch on to was now a spiritual identity. So this alter ego, then now a spiritual identity, one that constantly always is like high vibe. And, oh, I, if I have a bad low moment, I'm not going to manifest what I want. And, um, really into this whole love and light only kind of vibe 
um, and recognizing that truth, yeah, at our core, we are um, love, light, all the, all that is, you know, but all that is, is all that is, right? Everything encompasses, all that is, is everything, right? And so when we talk about our core essence being connected to all that is, that's actually the good and the bad as well, right? And so when we, in the 3D world, if I was continuing to reject aspects of myself that a I wasn't maybe proud of or maybe emotions I didn't want to feel or thoughts you know like suppressing things instead of just surrendering and moving into a place of acceptance so I could go inward instead of resisting and rejecting that's where I was right so I created this spiritual identity which now everything had to be good and flowery and rainbows and butterflies um and I was still rejecting aspects of my beingness of wholeness of all that is which is everything right feminine and masculine represents the yin and the yang of our dualistic nature and we're going to dive deeper into this but this is energy this is not um gender specific if that's making sense so when i've stumbled more deeper into energy and what that and more specifically feminine and masculine energy this is when i was truly able to start really breaking toxic cycles um and that's why i'm here to share this some of this with you today so i would love to know does any of this resonate with anybody that's here today you can throw it in the chat box or if you don't mind being on social media just as a reminder because this is recorded and it may be repurposed um, if you don't mind sharing you can definitely raise your hand and unmute if any of this resonates um i would love to know go ahead and throw that in the chat box 100 percent 100% perfect. Well, you're not in the, you're, this isn't an accident that you're here, right? So perfect. Yes, it does. Perfect. Definitely resonates. Actually, um, we're actually looking at Costa Rica property. <laughs> That's awesome. And I've been to Costa Rica. I did go to Costa Rica. I did do yoga on the beach. I just didn't move there and pack up all my shit and decide to avoid my life because wherever you go, you're going to take yourself, right? And so that was, that's what I had to look at, but I did end up going to Costa Rica and doing yoga on the beach for sure. Um, everything definitely resonates and yes, perfect. So we're going to get dive into this. So when I talk about, um, you know, feminine and masculine energy, let's talk about the nature of this real quick. So feminine energy, the feminine represents the subtle realm. The feminine represents the parts you can't see, taste, and touch, right? It's not the 3D manifested reality, although it's also relative within that reality. So this is a little hard to explain. And so just, well, I'll try to get it out the best I can. But for the purpose of this training, let's just, the feminine energy is the subtle realm and the masculine represents the more physical realm. So the feminine realm, the feminine essence represents the subtle, more beingness, where the masculine represents the externalized world, more doingness. And so when we are raised in largely a society that that really proves us on our external uh, achievements, you know, success, the career advancement, the relationships, the money, the car, the clothes, the whatever, uh, when we live in a society that is highly masculinated culture, right? Dominant society that praises us on our external accolades, then you can see how it's really easy to use um, external forms of validation in order to measure our worthiness, right? Whether it's media, whether it's our corporate culture, whether it's just reality, just our reality in general, we are a bunch of beings right souls having this physical experience walking around using external things in this 3d reality to validate our actual worthiness when we are our true essence is actually all of it all of it and that's a little deeper than we're probably going to dive today but our true essence is energy our true essence is our 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 essence of life itself it's the beingness we're connected to all things we're connected to nature we're connected 
to if you on a scientific level drill down to on a subatomic particle right you're going to see nothing but energy and, and vibration and space in between the particles right and it's just a matter of how fast something is vibrating makes it feel more solid or not at the very very core of everything is energy and what does that mean means energy can't be, you can't draw a line between energy and say, here's energy over here and here's energy over here. Energy is everything. And so if energy is everything, it also means we're, we're connected to everything, that there's nothing that we're not connected to, whether it's the chair that I'm sitting in or the this potted plant on my windowsill, it's all just fluidness, it's energy. And we're actually connected to all of those things. And you probably have had some kind of aha moment or epiphany around this. Maybe you're walking in nature or you're seeing a beautiful sunset or something like that. Um, and you and you realize and you just have this resonance that there's a connection there that you can't put your finger on. You can't rationally figure out or conceptualize and that's because the mind can't figure this out because the mind is trapped in duality and the mind is also logical analytical thinking is also very ma a masculine quality right so we've been conditioned to be living in this very masculine dominant way and suppressing our own inner essence and our own connection to all that is and our own connection to who we truly are which is life itself and an really on the grandest scale, we are connected to everything. So we are everything ultimately expressing in this 3D world as Shelly, as Sarah, as Zoe, as Olga, as Jess, as Noel, as Jenny, as Boosie, as Jerome, right? We're expressing, life is expressing through us having this dance with life, this dance of duality, this dance of good and bad, light and dark, up and down, feminine, masculine just represents that. Feminine, masculine points to the essence of who we truly are, um, but also points to the dualistic nature that we're dancing in, um, in order for our oneness to experience itself in this reality. Um, this is much deeper than what a lot of people are teaching when they teach feminine energy. It's more borders on just empowerment or, you know, or something like that. This is about drilling down into the essence of it, right? And so, so I hope that makes sense because the masculine is so dominant in our culture and society and it's how we've been conditioned as humans in this environment that we're trained more so to, to look externally outside of ourselves. But the calling is there to go inward and to connect with who we truly are, which is why you're probably on this to begin with, right? And you see this happening so often. There's in the collective, if you're aware, there's people waking up to this um, on all across the globe, right? Waking up to wanting to connect to that deeper part of themselves and recognizing that the masculine way of doing things you, it's not that the masculine is bad. There is no, we need both. They're yin and yang, two sides of the same coin, but they have to be in balance in order for there to be harmony. Um, just like in nature, nature flows and things happen in nature. Things get done in nature, but it flows and it's effortless. It's not something that has to be struggled through in order for there to for things to get done. And so really starting to embody this natural rhythm within our own self helps us come into a state of inner harmony and inner balance. And magically, because we are connected to all things and our external world is just a reflection of where we're, our own conscious projections and our own energetic, uh, our own energetic, um, we'll call it frequency, call it, call it resonance, right? That your external world starts to re recalibrate to what it is that you are doing internally with your energy. And so we have the ability to repel what it is we actually want by being out of alignment with our true essence and our flow, or we have the ability to come into alignment uh, with the natural energies that creates literally this entire universe and then become magnetic to what it is we actually want. So just like a magnet has a positive and a negative polarity, right? You can attract or repel what it is you're actually here to experience, right? And there's no good or bad to this because it's all just our own 
journey. Like there's nothing wrong. You're exactly where you need to be learning exactly what you need to learn or going through. If it's happening, it's meant to be. It's, it's something that's, that we chose right on a soul level to experience so that we could come into uh, self-realization more with who we truly are, which is beyond the physical, which is beyond the 3D and beyond what this human avatar suit that we're wearing right now. So is this resonating at all? Is any questions, comments, feedback, anything? Anybody want to come off to me? I understand if you don't, but if, if it's resonating or if you have any questions, I also monitor the chat too. Um, seeing some emojis pop up. So that's being received. I see that as a resonance. So I'm happy to see that that's resonating. So let's dive into some of the polarity characteristics of feminine and masculine energy. So, and we'll see where this goes. We'll see how much time permits because there's actually, yeah, we'll see how much time permits because there's actually, you know, you might've heard in the heard if you've been following this dark feminine, right? And that gets a bad rap or makes it feel like it's evil or bad. And dark feminine is not actually evil or bad at all. It's actually just part of the transformational death and rebirth process. So we're just going to dive into the, you know, feminine and masculine energy right now and just so we can um, get a better handle on how to identify the two, right? So feminine is going to be more, like I said, internalized. It's the subtle realm. It's more beingness, right? So feminine energy is very intuitive. It's very empathic. It's it's sense of empowerment from within. Um, it's very creative and nurturing. Um, it's literally the feminine that creates a baby, right? Like it's, and that I know that ties to gender, but it's energy, right? So it represents an energy. So creative, nurturing, sensual, receptive, receiving, feminine is very receiving. Um, and oftentimes we have blocks to receiving, which is why in my experience, I attracted men that were not able to give to me in the way that I quote unquote needed at the time. Need is a very key word we might talk about today. Um, but that was a reflection of me being blocked in my ability to receive. So I was not a magnetic match for a man that could give to the way I was, I was not open to receive, right? And so it was just a mere reflection of what's happening because the inner creates the outer, right? We become, everything is a mere reflecting back to us what we can, uh, what our conscious projection is, right? So, so very sensual, very fluid. It's very fluid. If you think of nature, it's very in the flow, right? Nature is the ultimate divine feminine energy um, and often referred to as the sacred feminine. This is why you might feel very connected to that inner part of yourself when you do spend time in nature, right? So fluid, empathic, there's an inner knowing or under inner standing, I call it, inner standing, inner knowing. Um, it's very expressive, right? So expressive, empowered from within, um, internalized, subtle realm, fluid, and in the flow, and open and vulnerable. Where the masculine, on the flip side of the coin, is very assertive and action-oriented and results-driven and logical and very tied to the intellectual mind and analytical mind. Um, it's very strong and powerful in an externalized way. It's very giving, right? So the feminine is receiving, the masculine is given, giving. It's very courageous in a strong sense, right? Because it's the masculine energy that goes out and takes action, uh, action-oriented energy, which often requires courage, right? Especially if we're getting out of our comfort zone. Um, very intellectual, I said that, uh, analytical mind, um, it's very doing energy, right? So feminine is very being, masculine is very doing. Masculine is very externalized, um, resilient and strong. Right. So you can see both are needed. They're two sides of the same coin. If you see a woman who's fully empowered in her feminine energy and she knows her worth and she's connected to her intuition, she trusts her instincts. She speaks her truth. She shares uh, what she wants to share. She is in alignment with her true values of what is honoring and what is in alignment. She has no problem saying no. 
when she needs to say no. She has no problem saying yes when she needs to say yes. Her masculine draws a strong boundary line, right? And this can actually get, so so she has, she draws a strong boundary line. I just want to have as a side note that the ego can also, if you're coming from a wounded place, like I was in my story that I shared earlier, um, the masculine will overcompensate with a boundary that is, over overcompensating for a fear or a void that is felt within. So the instead of trying a healthy boundary that still lets the good stuff in, right? Uh, draws a huge boundary around your heart in order to keep everything out. And so this is where we can become very hardened around our heart and have a shell around our heart and a, and you know a, wearing that shield, so to speak, around our heart. Um, because the masculine is kicking into overdrive as a good protector, masculine is very protective energy, as a good protector that it is going out in overdrive to overcompensate for that fear, or that void, or that lack of um, wholeness from within. So while the masculine can have a very positive um, uh, place, right? Because you can't have one without the other feminine, masculine energy, right? You want to be able to have strong boundaries. You want to be able to be assertive when it's called, when you're called to be assertive, you want to be able to use your logical mind or analytical brain to figure things out when you're in some kind of situation that requires some kind of, you know, point A to point B, right? You want to be giving, you also want structure and, in your life and you want a solid foundation and you want, you know, stability. These are all masculine characteristics and you want to be powerful or strong and intellectual. Like there's a place for all of these. Right. But what we see is a lot of hyper like misaligned masculine energy. So it's like masculine energy on steroids in the collective which is causing overwhelm and burnout and guarded hearts and um, pushing away what we truly want and con con being a control freak and overly controlling, th you know what I mean? Very much overdoing, overgiving, instead of just giving, overgiving, right? So it's masculine energy on steroids going out there, um, hyped up masculine energy as a direct reflection of this, and I say wounded lightly, wounded feminine energy that is still operating from a place of inner lack, filling a void, seeking that external validation outside of ourselves. And so that is the toxic loop that we're stuck in as a society, as a culture in general, right? That we are now breaking free from. And we can't break free from it with more doing. We can't break free from it from understanding. We can't break free from it from using our mental capacity right because this is not a mental game this is an energetic game we've done the mental game right like it's already hyper masculine energy but now we're starting to uh, recognize that that's not working obviously the the burnout the overwhelm the control freak the guarded heart the going against the stream against the flow the resistance right and so this is now a time of calling for the ones that are hearing this message to wake up and, and drop the struggle and drop the fight and chisel down that guarded heart, right? That, that barrier around the heart that keeps us from being vulnerable and open to receive. And part of this process is fully embodying our feminine essence, um, which is you know, honoring our energy, honoring our cycles, honoring the natural rhythm of how we're feeling, expressing our emotions in a healthy way, no longer suppressing them, uh, coming into alignment with our values of what feels naturally innate, like part of our value system and being able to honor that and speak our truth and live authentically who we truly are without the fear of what happens if we do. Because what happens if we do speak our truth? What happens if we live authentically? What happens if we actually say what we want to mean? What Say what we mean. What happens if we you know, do all of these things and are clear on our values. Well, that means maybe this person's not going to like it. Maybe that's going to, maybe I'll have to walk away from that job because that's not in alignment anymore with my values. Maybe this person's not in alignment with my values. So we come up against this uh, choice point where we, we get to choose value 
and healthy boundaries and self-worth and self inner divine worthiness, our innate worthiness over all of the band-aids and carrots that we've been chasing our whole life. And then that means that some of those things are going to fall away as you come into alignment in order to come into alignment. It means things that are not in alignment have to fall away. That's part of the natural process in order for the new to be reborn and birthed into this, just like nature, right? Things have to destruct and die. And then that's part of the cycle of nature in order to be the fertilizer literally for the new growth, right? And so nature shows us this, the cycle of letting go and the cycle, or the cycle of death and rebirth rather, and the cycle of going with the flow and the ebbs and the flows of life and the cycles of life and being in alignment with those. And um, when we fight against that process and when we resist that change, that's what causes suffering, right? That's what keeps us stuck in a prison instead of allowing ourselves to fully feel free and fly. And um, so, yeah, is this resonating? Is this making sense? Like part of it is recognizing the toxic cycles when they're at play. And then it's about embodying the feminine while also honoring your sacred masculine, right? And that requires courage because the sacred masculine has been has been conditioned through society, culture, and our reality, um, media, and everything to fill that void no matter what. Fill that void, chase that carrot, fill that void no matter what, and make sure it looks good to everybody else too because we're stacking up our worthiness. We're, we're using that as a barometer to determine our worthiness when we see everybody else and we compare ourselves against each other. And so it's constant comparison, constant validation seeking, constantly externally seeking outside of ourselves. And what I'm suggesting here when it comes to really embodying your feminine power is not to latch on to another archetype, like I am feminine, hear me roar. You know, I can do it all myself, I'm feminine. Like it's not about creating another mask. It's actually about taking all the masks off. It's actually about going inward and connecting with the essence of who you are, which doesn't need a mask at all, even though we still wear masks and we play roles in this 3D reality, right? We're a brother, a sister, a mother, an aunt, a, a, a boss, a colleague, an employee, like we still wear these roles. Uh, wear these masks and play these roles but are we able to play them consciously are we able to play them with awareness of who we truly are underneath all of those roles that we hold ourselves so tightly to and guilt trip ourselves so often for when we don't measure up to some perfection standard yet again it's just a trap it's a hamster wheel that we're constantly on this hamster wheel of life that we're constantly chasing and the suggestion here is that by fully embodying our feminine essence, we're actually, we're, we're, we're jumping off the hamster wheel step slowly, right? We're peeling away another layer of the onion and we're going a level deeper than just treating the physical reality. Like I mentioned in the story when I shared at the beginning, right? We're going levels deeper, quote unquote, deeper, right? Into the essence of who we truly are so that we can fully live uh, free and untamed that energy and express live our authentic truth and come into alignment with our values I know a lot of you when I read the description a lot of you have come into this container right now because you're in the middle of a transition maybe it was a breakup maybe it was something else um, but there's a transit there's a choice point here right and um, aligning with the value system is probably the key most entry level thing to do when starting to work with the feminine essence. So we can talk about this. I want to make sure I stay checked on time. It's actually 1044 when I look at the clock, which is one of, I get 144 a lot. So that's just another version of that, which doesn't surprise me. Does anybody have any questions? You can throw it in the chat box. The first step into really tapping into this feminine energy is recognizing when you're in the toxic loop. And I would say the biggest breakthrough is to really first and foremost connect with the fem with with your inner value system and really truly know what that inner value system is so if there is a takeaway from this training it is to really get tapped into your value system and then recognize what comes up that's not in alignment with that value system and that's when the work will begin that's when the alchemy takes place. That's when the transformation starts to occur and the metamorphosis, right? The butter, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. It's not a comfortable experience. I'm 
probably pretty sure that that's might not be comfortable. Maybe it is for the caterpillar, but in order to go through that metamorphosis, there's, um, there's a cocooning that happens. There's a going inward. There's a, there's a, uh, self inquiry. There's a being able to, um, literally transform into a whole new um a whole new version and this isn't that that one where we're at is bad it's not about that it's about true acceptance um and then letting life unfold because the the caterpillar turning into the butterfly is just the most natural next step it doesn't have to think about it it's not something that they have to figure out or do it's just the natural process of life happening and so really releasing releasing the grip on life and releasing the control on life and allowing life to unfold and blossom you know just like that met just like you know if you're in yoga that lotus flower blossoming like it's a natural process of what we go through in this life experience it doesn't have to be work or struggle it's just the natural next step when we flow is your natural fluidity and flow is your natural state of being the mind will layer duality on top of it all and say, this is good, this is bad and interrupt what, um, and interrupt the cycle, right? So the mind is very tied to uh, duality and also our masculine energy, we can get caught up in the mind very easily because the masculine energy is very analytical and logical and um, intellectual which is where we're at right now as a society. Is that making sense? And so there's a paradigm shift occurring, which is why I've been feel, felt called to hold this um, masterclass and just shine a light on this, shine a light of awareness on this, because there is, uh, for anybody who's in attendance that's registered, there's a reason that you're here and there is a, probably an inner calling to go a level deeper, a layer deeper, to peel away another layer of the onion and to not settle for superficial validation anymore outside of ourselves. And ultimately the, the, the main driving point could be to transform your life, right? Or to um, see, have a better relationship or move into a better career or this or that. So there's different ways we're gonna be shifting in the 3D reality as we come into more alignment with who we truly are. And so that's also just a natural byproduct though of our inner alignment. And so the relationship or the career or the accolades or success outside of ourselves is a byproduct of us coming into alignment and honoring our values and then taking action when action is necessary, taking aligned action when action is necessary. Cause there is a time and place where masculine energy is a hundred percent needed as part of the process. You can't have one without the other but it's aligned action when action is needed and not action for the sake of action, which just causes burnout and not action to fill a void um, because we don't want to feel something that's not aligned action. And if we continue to put band-aids on that using action as a band-aid to avoid what it is, what we truly need to feel or release or let go or align with, you know, then what we do is we perpetuate the cycle of suffering. Um, and it just shows up as a revolving door of circumstance that creates patterns in our life. So if you recognize a pattern in your life, it's a direct relationship to a cycle that is playing out inwardly that can be shifted when your focus is also shifted inwardly first and foremost. Is that making sense? Um, I'm going to look at the chat box and I want to stay track on time. So I want to open it up for any questions. We're about uh, 50 minutes past the hour. Um, any questions, comments? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the caterpillar literally turns into a liquid to turn into a butterfly. Isn't that craziness? That is crazy to think about. Like, think about that. Like, that is life. That is life. But humans, you know, when we look at animals and we look at nature, that's happening every single day. But humans, we get a little bit of uncomfortableness or a little bit out of our comfort zone or a little bit of a little bit of an emotion arises because we have these so many dimensions to our being, right? Um, and and all shit hits the fan and then we go through an entire coping mechanism in order to try to like fix or make it better or, or do this or that, right? It's a beautiful metaphor, what you, uh, what you shared in the chat regarding the butterfly, right? And um, 
the more we can sit with and be present with what is, the more we release our suffering. And the more we can then flow with the natural ebbs and flows of life and allow life to unfold for us in this magical way. Synchronicities, magic, wonder, like life has so many possibilities for our for us that we tend to um, put the clamps on with our very limited little point of awareness that we're using in our little you know um, when we're when we're operating from fear and we're looking at everything through it's like looking at everything through like this little um, microscope and we're just drilling down drilling down drilling down to like this problem that needs to be fixed and we're failing to see this bigger picture of what's available. And so sometimes I use the metaphor, I haven't used it in a while, but it's sort of like a big picture puzzle. Um, those giant puzzles you see, when you throw all the pieces on the board, none of it makes sense. If you don't look at the box, you don't even know what it's supposed to look like. You don't even know what you're putting together yet if you don't look at the cover of the box. You just have all of these pieces. Well, life is sort of like that. It has all of these different pieces and you just figure, you know, oh, this fits over here and then this fits over here and this fits over here. And you're starting to you're starting to come into something fitting and you still have no freaking idea what the hell it is because it's just like this blob of something, right? Like you don't even know, but just more pieces are fitting, more pieces are fitting and more pieces are fitting. And then that doesn't fit. So we're going to set that over there. That doesn't fit. We're going to set that over there, but this fits. And so that's going to go here. And that's sort of what like life is for me, like my metaphor I like to use because it's like, you don't even know what it is, but the, there's a bigger picture the universe, God, source, all that is one is whatever you want to call it has a huge picture for our life where we're so focused on what we can see with our naked eye, just in this 3D reality. And we forget that there's a huge perception available to us, that life is literally flowing through us. And at every moment, everything is literally a miracle. Like the fact that we're even sitting on the Zoom call right now, like, how is that even happening? Like, this is energy happening as a Zoom call right now. It doesn't even make fucking sense. But when you, and if you can just release that need to know and just play with life and feminine is all about play. It's all about being present in the moment. It's all about releasing control. It's all about ebbing and flowing and just playing and seeing what fits and letting go of what doesn't. We'll move this over here. It doesn't fit. Eventually you get a bigger, bigger bird's eye view of the puzzle as you put it together and you can see, oh, that's a beautiful sunset. This is, you know, you get a bigger, bigger picture. It's like more is revealed to you as you let go of that narrow little focus and you just play and you have fun putting the pieces together. Is that, I hope that is resonating for somebody. And Lucy, I, you had your hand up. Did you have a comment or did you want to say something or was it in the chat box? I did see that come up. Uh, hi, Sarah. Um, I actually had a question. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from, uh, I, so, I sort of have an internal struggle to know whether, you know, in the beginning when you're telling your story, mm -hmm. you shared about how when you were in the masculine energy, how you wanted to be in control of everything, make sure everything looks perfect externally. Mm -hmm. And um, and how you know that you're in the, in the divine feminine, you just said now, is when you are in flow and, of course, in sync with your values. So, so what I'm struggling with now, right now, is I actually want to transition from corporate. Mm -hmm. um, I feel extremely exhausted from working in corporate um, mm -hmm. and to having my own business, which I feel is, is more aligned with what I believe is my calling. Um, but I'm finding that I'm first wanting to make sure that I'm putting structures together. Like maybe let me have that own that business so that I can have money. It's almost like I, I don't trust that if I step into, yeah, so I'm lacking that trust that if I step into um, outside of corporate, that I will have um, yeah, sustenance, sustenance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do I how do I know whether I'm doing the right thing? Maybe I'm doing the right thing by making sure that 
you know, there's, there's money that I've put aside or there's another side business that will take care of me or, or whether that's an indication of me being in, 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 in masculine energy as I've always been. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so this is a, there's a lot of layers to this question and I love it. Um, you won't know per se in your mind you'll know this is an inner standing. So calling happens from your inner knowing. So you, you'll know when you know, but you don't need to know how you know. Your mind mm. is very logical and, and, and thinks your heart, your soul knows. Um, so mm. it's an inner standing and a knowing versus an analytical, logical um, conclusion that you can come to. However, disowning the masculine side of things is not necessarily beneficial either. So like I said, stability is a very foundational piece of of how we exist right so stability mm -hmm. foundation um that's part of masculine though so that that's represented in our physical realm when we see buildings and and then things right and so like the masculine brings structure to our world and the mm -hmm. and and they're both needed so there's nothing wrong with i teach um i help female spiritual entrepreneurs launch their businesses. And what I teach is a very feminine and masculine approach. I teach strategy. I teach foundation. Mm. I teach marketing. I teach sales. I teach how to generate revenue, mm. right? Because that's mm. a very necessary a part of being able to flow in your feminine essence. The masculine in our life has to be strong and solid in order in our life, in ourself, in order for our feminine energy to feel safe to flow. Absolutely. Makes sense. Thanks. So. No. And so if you're coming, one thing that's coming up is if you're coming from a corporate background and you have been in a mass hyper masculine energy where it's go, 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 and a lot of um, results driven at all costs and burnout or overwhelm, what can happen is we can actually disown our masculine energy because we're like, well, I'm not going to go back to that. So then mm -hmm. next thing you know, we disown our masculine energy. And I tried this sitting on the couch and trying to meditate for six months to manifest my business because I was so disowning my masculine energy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but that doesn't work, mm -hmm. right? What mm -hmm. works was masculine aligned action, but not over action, mm -hmm. not over giving, not overdoing, but masculine aligned action that's paired mm -hmm. with feminine essence, which is values and intuition and guidance, which is not an understanding it's an inner standing it's a knowing mm. so you won't know you'll feel it you'll know it inside mm. and then mm. the next actions that come from that that are aligned that help you feel supported and are, are are part of what you're being guided to do and sometimes that mm. does mean taking a leap of faith on yourself because the masculine energy requires courage so some of those one of those aligned actions might be to eventually leave your job eventually if that's something you want to do mm -hmm. um, and that will require courage and masculine energy to do so but it'll also simultaneously be aligning with your value system which is just the natural process um yeah. so i hope that helps did that resonate at all it helps a lot uh, oh my goodness because i think every time i think about stepping out um i i think about disowning my masculine energy because i'm tired of of of, of, the, of the overwhelm and um mm -hmm. and the burnout so thanks a lot for bringing that balance yeah so the good the aligned masculine energy is going to bring stability foundation structure a sense of you know um financial stability uh process systems formula you know like structure right in order for the feminine to flow so in in order for the feminine to feel safe in order for the feminine to feel open in order for you know so both are required and if i and and oftentimes what i see with um female spiritual entrepreneurs if they disown that then they struggle a lot with generating with getting their business off the ground or really generating revenue um, or having a solid structure that doesn't burn them out because it's no fun to be constantly wondering where your next client's going to come from and it's no fun like trying to like be so unstructured in your business that you don't have a system in place or any predictability or any kind of structure or foundation mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. I always teach 
3D strategy with feminine energy embodiment, but you actually need both. You need aligned strategies and you need systems or you need structure or you need foundation, which is masculine. And you need energetic alignment and embodiment with your values and following your intuition and, and this and that. And those have to merge. Like Love both needed. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay, perfect. And it's right at 11 o'clock. I saw one other question pop up. I have a hard time tapping into my personal value system. Any tips and tricks? Hard time tapping into my personal value system. This is about, you know, so real quick, I mean, because we're sort of out of time, but I wanted to address this question. So, I mean, I'm sort of and this is key because how can you uphold your value? How can you have boundaries either way if you don't have a strong value system and know, and our even our values can change over time. Um, and our beliefs obviously change over time. Our mindset changes over time. Who we actually appear as a person in this reality changes over time because that's actually not who we are. The part of us who we truly are, side note, is the part of us that never changes. Um, but, but in this reality, yeah, if you don't have your values, then you're not able to uphold them. You're not able to have a strong masculine. So this is the work. And this is about um, doing a deep, uh, maybe some self-inquiry um, where you maybe just spend some time first recognizing any coping mechanisms that you might be using to keep yourself distracted from potentially going inward and asking some of these probing questions for yourself and just inquiring, you know, like, do you value, example would be like, do you value your health? Do you value your, your time freedom? Do you value, um, do you value solitude? Do you value, you know, like what is it that, you know, you connect with and the only person that can know that is you, right? And so the first step would be to take some time to slow down, recognize any coping mechanisms that keep you in your head, keep you in your mental activity, um, because you're not going to connect with your values and your mental capacity. You're connecting with your values are tied to your heart space. It's who it's, we're not, we don't want to create values just based on what we think we need um, or go out there with the logical analytical brain and start drawing lines in the sand and having these boundaries up because that's really, people can do that and they live in a very kind of life because they're constantly just in their head all the time. So this is about connecting to your heart space and allowing your values to naturally arise from there. Then you'll naturally know the boundaries will come from that place, right? Because then you'll naturally know when something crosses that line um, and is not in alignment with your values. So spending some time alone, possibly in solitude, has, is a, a, if you're asking for a personal suggestion, this is what I always suggest to clients as well, slowing down, recognizing any coping mechanisms like rushing or overbooking yourself or overdoing or anything that keeps very sneaky over, you know, very sneakily keeps you um, occupied um, or in your brain or in your, in your mental capacity so that you can sink into your heart space and spend some time there because your heart will speak to you and you, your intuition will speak to you and your values will become clear um, versus trying to figure them out. So um when you're in solitude or when you're spending some time walking in nature or just walking your dogs or something like that, just honoring some time to be, honoring some time to just be without distraction, without other people, even as much here and there when you can, and just connecting with that sense of beingness. You can also, as an this is more of an externalized kind of doing, but you can also look at the, some of the patterns that are coming up in your life um, that have been repeating and ask, is that something that you want to continue repeating? And if it's not something that you want to continue repeating, you can ask yourself why, and that will help you sort of drill down a little bit. I know it sounds like a, it's a mental activity, right? This is a doing, this is like a, it's, it's part of the self inquiry process really though. So, um, when a pattern arises that you don't necessarily want to continue for whatever reason, you can ask yourself, why is that? And, and um, that will help lead you to a value that it is up against um, underneath that pattern. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. Slowing down, removing distractions, definitely needing your first step. And that's about becoming, becoming present, living in the present moment. 
um, avoiding the distractions, recognizing the coping mechanisms, because we all have them. The ego loves coping mechanisms. Remember escapism, control freak, um, overworking, numbing out to wine and Netflix, um, all the things, uh, all the things the ego tried to pull all the stops to keep me from slowing down for a long time for many years. And that's what made me really sick and eventually led to a breakdown, which led to a breakthrough. Um, I'm suggesting we don't have to have breakdowns necessarily, but they do serve us when we do. So, <laughs> but that's another way is just recognizing sometimes when we're stuck in a loop and we're stuck in a pattern, what, um, why, if we don't want that pattern, if it's an unfavorable pattern, asking ourselves why we don't want that pattern. What is that? What is that underlying reason there? And that can lead to obviously you help helping you uncover some of like what you truly value. And a lot of times though, you're approaching it from a mental space and the mental body is like the, the mind is oftentimes our worst enemy. I'm just going to say it until you, until we, you, we learn to use our mind as a tool to get from point A to point B or to make a discerning investment decision or something like that, or whatever, we use our mind as a tool that it is. 99.9% .9 of the time, ancient spiritualism is rooted on this. The yoga, ancient yoga is rooted on this, right? 99.9% .9 of the time for most people across the planet, the mind is our worst enemy and it is not used as a productive tool. It is more used as a way to enslave us um, with these random thoughts that literally paint the worry, you know, the worst picture. And it's also stuck in duality. So it's going um, into the past and into the future, um, looking to try to fix things or avoid things and stuff like that. So I would just try to say being present, being present, being present, being present, going within, being present, um, slowing down in order to do that would be probably the best, best thing to start. Uh, let me see here. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. angel numbers are fun I get angel numbers all the time and you know they've meant different things for me at different times I mean I, synchronicities angel numbers life is one big sea of synchronicity um and really no one can really I mean this is a this is a double edge like I could go down a rabbit hole with this but ultimately uh, what do they you know usually the 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 mainstream spiritual community will say that synchronicities are a sign that you're getting um you know guidance right and that can be and i've had that happen but then that's also been part of my journey where um i start to recognize that of course i'm going to see synchronicities because i'm connected to all things so for me it's a sign of alignment so it's like if i'm connected to this person who just said this perfect thing to me like of course i'm going to run into that you know so for me it's a sign of alignment and there's also you know guidance sometimes but it's also a person this person is seeking meaning in the synchronicity somewhere so they they they've had less meaning over time i guess you could say but they are it's a wonder it's wondrous it's wondrous it's like it doesn't make this world that we live in this is just a beautiful example of how magical it is it's like who knows right um i get messages from synchronicities and numbers and then i get a sense of complete connection to all that is like i am the synchronicity of course i'm going to experience it because there's no disconnect from that um but i often use spiritual law and i always ask for whatever needs to be revealed to me to be revealed to me. And then it comes in signs, synchronicities, numbers, animals, you know, life uses everything to get just to support life. Um, so I would suggest maybe just asking yourself what it means to you, because what it means to me is what it's meant for is what it has meant to this person living this physical experience. And I would suggest maybe going inward and asking what this means to you and even asking for confirmation sometimes are fun and, and then getting those and receiving those as well. But this is the more connected I am to my inner being, the more I see synchronicity. Um, it's sort of to me now like a little wink from the universe that I'm supported and life is flowing and I'm in alignment. Um, and sometimes they mean things and sometimes they don't, but it's there's really no wrong or right to it. Sometimes they mean things to me and sometimes they don't, but they're, it's there, you know, like I get angel, like 
right? Every, even when I'm on this call, right? The angel numbers are there. Um, I'll like wake up from the couch right at the right time. Like literally I try to avoid them. I'm like, there's no way there's an angel, you know? And of course there is like, there's, there's no escaping. And that's sort of like a beautiful metaphor for life itself. Like we're, there's no escaping life. Like this is it, right? Like we're living it. This is it. It's flowing through us and we're connected to all things. And the more we align with that, the more the spiritually openings there are, the more synchronicities we see. Um, and so I have fun with them. That's the ultimate. Are they fun? And what do they mean to you? They're, they're definitely, um, it's a magical world that we live in. It can't be explained or described. Does that make sense? I hope that resonates. I hope that wasn't like a lackluster response for you, but even if it was, maybe that will serve some serve somehow because there is no wrong or right, really. It's your journey and it means whatever it is to you at the moment that it means something to you. And one day it will mean something possibly different to you because nothing is ever the same. Everything is always fluid and changing. And as we grow and evolve on this and become more aware or this or that, like uh, things change, meanings change, beliefs drop away, belief systems. I don't even believe half the things I used to believe to. And that includes the stuff I used to believe as part of the spiritual world, uh, spiritual journey, right? So don't lock it in so hard where it has to mean something. I would say play with the meaning and have fun with it and let it mean something to you for as long as it does. And that comment just came at 1111. <laughs> so I think that's the perfect way to end this note. It's 1111 when your comment just posted. So new beginnings for everybody, right? New beginnings for everybody and alignment for everyone. So I will be sending out a replay uh, for everybody that wants a copy of the replay. Um, check your inbox. There is also a program I didn't even talk about. It's called Embodied Empress. The details will be in the email if that's something that you're you're looking uh, looking for. There is a way to dive deeper into this embodiment work that is, is available. And I, if you feel called to join on a future, this is not, as you can tell, it's a very organic flowing container. So if you feel called to join on a future one, I would love to have you. You can definitely join more than one because each conversation is completely different and they're just so fun to have. So, and everybody's energy is unique, what you bring to the table. And so it's a very different experience every single time. So thank you ladies for tuning in with me. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week and Easter Sunday if you're celebrating and Hope to see you soon. Namaste.